Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. This is a portion of the meeting that we, uh, if you're not on the agenda, you have something you want to talk about, uh, you can bring it up and act on it, but we'll take under advisement to the next meeting. Uh, is there anybody in that position? I know I know you are. I, I didn't know you were on the agenda yet. So if there's nobody else, Mike, you can come on up. All right. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank you for all the nice Christmas decorations out in the courtyard. Sure. We've got one, one that's got a fuse out. We'll get that fixed tomorrow. Okay. Um, a couple things on, uh, on my list. Uh, we've had a couple of board resignations. The first one is Jessica Collier. Jessica was uh, with Holiday and Express and Suites, was our hotelier. Uh, she had to resign due to some help, as well as some increased job responsibilities. Okay. I have talked with the new general manager, uh, Jill Miller, at Hampton Inn and Suites to find out if she would be interested in trying to replace you know, Apple for Apple and hotelier for hotelier. She is interested. Again, this is a county appointment, yeah. so it would require uh, the blessing of this commission. Okay. Ms. Harbaugh, what was her name? Pardon me? Uh, who is Jill Milk. And Jill has been in the hotel industry for a number of years, uh, came over from the cobblestone uh, in Madison. And the second resignation is Don Cooper. I heard that. Don uh, was was I believe up for probably either reappointment or a new appointment. But I want to make the uh, commissioners aware. So of that. who is he? Our appointment as well. He is a, a county appointment. Yes. Okay. And that does that's just a layman. I'm sorry. A layman. A layperson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that, and that can. Do you be have filled. anybody in mind that you want us to? That, that's what I, would, or do you, I would like to work with the commissioners on <clears throat> finding a, a good, solid representative uh, in the hospitality and tourism industry to, to bring to the table. Uh, we've been very fortunate to bring some good people like Jim Jonas to the table recently. Uh, and I think you'll find Jim Miller would be a, a very strong and, and excited candidate to join our board as well. So, um, yeah, if that's all right, we'd like to work with you and okay. hopefully bring uh, an idea or two uh, back for the 1st of January. Okay. Well, I think as a board, we'd like to have, and because this is really a, the first year that the county has had more input, I guess, if that's the word for uh, into the visitors commission than before mm -hmm. and I after the first year I'd like to have a kind of an executive with your your board that would be great if we can to kind of iron out some stuff that you know I guess kind of like what we expect of some reporting or something you know hey where are you at what you, what's going on and, and uh, what's working what's not working and how you know so uh, and, sure. and, and also your uh, with Don's been on that board, I think from the beginning of time. So, um, so seeing where the what direction you know your board or new board want, you know, is thinking about going. So, so um, we can set a date sometime. And just, your your comment brought up another item that I wanted to bring uh, to everybody's attention. But we had our election for our executive committee. Uh, Russ Comer with West Banco is our new president. Uh, the vice president is, is Jim Jonas uh, from Go Milk Stuff. Uh, Jill Baker uh, has decided to stay on as secretary. Uh, Jill is with the city of Scottsburg. And then our treasurer is Joe Gibson, uh, historian from Lexington. And he is continuing on in that position. So Jill and both uh, and then Joe are staying on in the same positions. Sounds good. Uh, you talk about reporting. I wanted to, a couple years ago, we put together a little report 
that outlines um, basically the grant dollars that have been distributed as well as sponsorship. Uh, and this goes back to 1999. <clears throat> Zach, I'm not sure how many copies I've got, but we'll, we'll keep them going down. I don't necessarily but uh, this breaks down uh, basically by organization uh, and then what it does is it identifies the year that the grant was uh, the application was submitted uh, and then the total for that particular organization so if you take a look you can go through and you can see how it's broken down not only by groups but also for the city of Austin and the fireworks the fireman's festival uh, Austin Beautification Committee, and then you can see a grand total as well for the city of Austin. Uh, we've done that also for the city of Scottsburg, for the county, uh, Leota, uh, Lexington. Um, but the key is, is getting to the end, and I'm, I'm very proud to say that our organization has been, been involved with the distribution of one, a little over $1.7 million to our community to help with various festivals, fairs, and special events, and, and the promotion, the overall promotion of Scott County. And that's since 1999. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. The last uh, little, little report I wanted to distribute is kind of where our marketing dollars have been spent this year. Just send one more down that direction. But this this breaks down. I mean, everything from our Travel Indiana magazine to JNC Printing, Tourist Information Services, which is our brochure distribution service. Um, Indiana Festival Association is the Indiana Festival Guide. Um, you know, even includes uh, donuts. Uh, Michigan Office Solutions is our printing uh, in house, and, and how we assist. Uh, local organizations, but I think getting down to the other, uh, a little further down, you can see the grants, uh, the Preservation Alliance, the Summer Music on the Square, uh, City of Austin Fireworks, etc., etc., etc. As you can see, where we distributed those grant dollars this year and the total. Now that 105, 121, and 91 cents does not include the $10,000, and that's why it is set off to the side for the Preservation Alliance. That that funding was given uh, in early January, uh, 124 to be exact. Now you'll notice the Scott County Fair Association, um, there is uh, $9,464.91 that has been paid out in capital improvements to date. Uh, I just had John McNeely bring in a stack of additional invoices and we'll be working with John to get an invoice. But uh, from a $25,000 commitment we had made this year, he still has $15,535.09 left. Uh, the, I believe he's got more than enough <laughs> invoices there to cover that. Good deal. So, just wanted to bring you up to date on that. I, I think that was a little bit of uh, your questions, Mike, from our phone conversation. Mm -hmm. and just want to make sure you had that. And again, you know, as we meet in January, we can talk in a little more depth and detail about things and yeah. where we are. And, um, I received the information on the grants, um, and I will be over probably tomorrow to, to understand that a little bit better. That would be great. Perfect. All right. So, any questions how, do you all have for me? Uh, yeah, how much did. Does it show how much we took in this year? I'm sorry? Does it show how much you took in this year? The visitor I estimation? I don't have that uh, innkeeper's tax uh, figures today. I didn't bring that report with me. Um, but I can email that to you tomorrow if you like. Okay. And that is... Um, Do we know how much we have left? How much we have left? Yeah, from the end of the year. After paying everything out. Mm -hmm. That I don't off the top of my head. But I can find that out for you. But we, we are on, uh, last year was a record year since they started keeping track of that, um, and that was like 2015. So we're, this is, I mean, I think we are only $30,000 behind last year's total, maybe $31,000 behind last year's total to date. 
and I was thinking that was somewhere in the neighborhood of it, it was two seventy five plus. It was just a rough two hundred seventy five thousand plus was okay. Was what what sticks in my head? Do we know what percentage of that gets paid out every year? We close to all of them. Did you have those numbers? And that's not submitted for us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I'll, I'll send that report, uh, that innkeeper's tax report to you tomorrow. I think I've got everybody's email. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll make sure that auditor has. Yeah, has and I can get it to these guys. So. Yeah. Well, the report that I've got actually is a, a legal sheet that shows month by month from 2015 all the way up to, to this month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, it doesn't include this month because we don't have this month's figures yet, but probably have it by Friday. Okay. So, all right. Here you go. Thank, Thank you all very you. much. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll report to you in time for next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> to our attention that uh, we have uh, found out that you've been awarded a 2023 Director of the Year for the Indiana Association of Community Corrections. Is that correct? Indiana. Missy helped me. She's on the board. <laughs> Sonia. <laughs> Indiana Community Corrections Association Act. Council. Council. That's the part I always forget. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, from what I've read, it, it's uh, because uh, I think your co workers and uh, has nominated you for this position or this award and for your leadership and skills, your support of the department, and, and um, Sounds to me like there's a if if every county has a corrections department, that's 92 uh, individuals. So that's a great accomplishment, and and uh, I know uh, we wanted you to come here to acknowledge that and and thank you for uh, the work you do over there. And uh, and um, I never really hear anything out of you guys, so it's obvious. Uh, that's always a good thing when there's nothing to be uh, red flags or anything else going on. So again, I uh, want to acknowledge you in our meeting. And uh, you guys got anything you want to? Yeah, I want to say thank you very much for your dedication to this family. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. And your staff. I couldn't do it without that. <laughs> Missy. How are you? Good. Ethan. How are you? Good. How are you? All right. We're good. So I brought with me Jason Puckett from SRI, and he's going to explain to you about a certificate sale that you guys may be interested in doing. <coughs> So we've got 25 parcels that did not sell at the tax sale in the fall. Uh, you guys have the option now to offer those for another public auction for a greatly reduced price uh, to try and get those back into the hands of folks that will hopefully pay the taxes for you going forward. So um, we've got it all there yeah, for you in that folder. Uh, we've got a contract that would need to be signed with SRI to, to give us permission to hold this sale for you. And then a resolution that would need to be adopted um, that has you know, a list of those parcels there's a re exactly the resolution that they already drew up, and it's probably something you, you do all the time. And, and what this is, and I want to explain to people, is that we have tax sales, and sometimes in, during those tax sales, the properties don't sell. And, uh, and in the past, we've had some municipalities that said, hey, you know, we have a, a use for that property or or we know a developer that wants to, you know, do some of that property and, and we just sign it over to them. But this, we said last time that happened that we were going to look into doing it ourselves and uh, trying to get 
once we do this, even if, and there's a few on here, and, and we talked about it earlier, that uh, there's a couple of like $27,000, $21,000 for a vacant property that no one is ever going to pay that, that fee for, and no one is going to buy that at an auction because they can't make a profit on it. So during this, this type of sale, the commissioners can set the minimum bid of what we think the you know we want to start with and get and the and the object of the whole thing is to get it back on a tax roll mm -hmm. where somebody either develops the property somebody wants to add on to their you know a neighbor neighboring property wants to add it to their property and and eventually it'll all get back on tax uh, on the tax base and we'd be able to be able to uh have some revenue back mm -hmm. off of it so instead of as Missy told me earlier, one of these have been on there for since 2003. 2003. So nobody's paid taxes on for 2003, and we're not getting anything. And <clears throat> some of these properties, I I did drive by. Some of them are vacant lots. Some of them uh, have a burnout house that no one's going to do anything with. Uh, some of them are alleys. Uh, there are four or five that are a problem that I've found several years ago with the B&O Railroad that when they took the railroad out, people didn't realize uh, that they had to come back in and accept that property back into to their deed so that there's some deed work that would have to happen. So I did <clears throat> in the past, uh, there were a couple of people that fell into that B&O Railroad thing that did fix their properties. Uh, there are five other properties out there and it may be the same person because it goes through Lexington Township out there. So, uh, so anyway, this is the reasoning we're we're talking about doing a certified tax sale. So, Zach, do you see anything with that? Okay. So, you guys got any comments, questions, or? So, I'll entertain a motion to accept this resolution. And um, it'll be uh, the resolution establishing the intent to conduct a commissioner's sale to sales tax sale certificate for property that is severely delinquent in payment of property taxes. So I'll make a motion. I'll make Greg motion. makes a motion to accept the resolution. Uh, Randy, Greg, <laughs> and I'll make that unanimous. So it is. Better. Grandson's birthday, sixth day of December, 23. So, we also need a motion to be able to sign a contract or a service agreement with SRI. Um, and their fee is, you said 15% of, of what is collected. What is collected, so he may... Plus costs. Huh? Plus costs. Plus, yeah, your, your advertising yes, costs. Yes, 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 for the advertising costs. But from what you've under, you've explained to me is that if the advertising cost is $5,000 and we have 15 properties, 15 divided by 5,000, that's the minimum bid that we have to, we have to. You would want your minimum bid to be at least that much, correct, yeah, to cover your options. And typically with a tax sale, we, I think we usually assume that cost and then yes. invoice you for it. In this case, you would just let us know what your advertising cost was. It wouldn't okay. even go through us. Okay. So, again, this is a final sale for some of these people and they, you know, mm -hmm. some of them like the 20 or 2007 properties, they've assumed they still own the property. So Missy is going to send them a final letter yeah. stating this is the last letter you're going to receive and the property will be, you know, possibly not years after this date. Um, and again, you, you acknowledge that unlike a tax sale of 360 days plus 30, this is 120 days that you have to redeem, you know, redeem the property. your yes. property by paying it. So, I want to acknowledge again here, we talked about a date that we're talking about doing this. And we're, we're are we good with that date of March the 8th? March 8th, yeah. March the 8th at 10 o'clock? Yes. Yes. You good? Mm -hmm. Lynn, you good? 
Okay. So and just so you're aware, I was just thinking of this as well. This is a one year contract. So if you decide to do this this year, we'll bring it back to you again next year. If you okay. Want to do it again. All right. So you're not locked well, hopefully, in. we don't have any other problems. Yeah, hopefully, they're all locked there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll entertain a motion to sign this, I guess, a service agreement with SRI for a one year contract with, you know. I'll make that motion. Randy makes a motion to accept the or to sign the service agreement. Greg, I'll second. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So I guess again, I'm gonna leave that on the side. All right. Well, those are again. There's. I don't know. One of them was an alleyway. Some of them one were, was a dead end lane. Yeah, dead end so. lane. So, and Kevin, we may talk to you about that one because it was on like D Hart Garage or Red Bud Lane. Red Bud Lane. It goes behind where the old D Hart grocery used to be. Alpha Two Fifty Six. Oh, Alpha Two Fifty Six. Yeah. There's some homes on it, but it looks like a gravel lane. But I don't know if it's anything we've ever had in our county. Thing at all, so it's obvious maybe it isn't. But since it's they're trying to redeem taxes off of it, so mm -hmm. all right. And I didn't know if you, I didn't fill the date in on the time because I guess you maybe you probably want to do okay. January one to December thirty first or something. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let the big Sorry. Ones figure that one out for me. <laughs> well, I hate that people don't pay their taxes, and, and quite honestly, again, they these are these are properties that have been through multiple mm -hmm. tax sales, so it's not like it's a like, you're, one, and, you're yeah. one and done. I mean, and, and the reasoning this is going to be different is that uh, we can we dictate what the starting or the minimum bid will be. So, where in a tax sale, correct me if I'm wrong, it has to go for whatever the tax is owed on. Mm -hmm. So, like this one is twenty-seven thousand dollars in back taxes. It can start out a hundred dollars, and yeah. if it sells, it sells. I mean, uh, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. no, uh, I think that's you. That's so that's where we're at with that. Okay. Missy, you got anything else? Um, nope. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. There's All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Brittany. Hello. I want to first thank you and the health department for allowing us, the yeah. clerk, to use uh, the county van for election uh, uh, boxes or machines to be moved in your equipment. I think it worked out pretty good. Um, Sometimes they thought they were locked in and couldn't get out, but um, uh -oh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it worked out. Yeah, good. We're glad we could do that. So appreciate that. The first thing we're going to talk about is the health board appointments. Okay. So we have one person that is rolling off after December thirty first. Who is that? Chris Marshall, but he's only been on for yeah. a short time because he took over for Ron West to resign. So with all these new, and Zach, I'm looking at you because. All these new laws on the health board appointments, it's, it's insane. So I think that Boston and the city of Scottsford will now have an appointment. Well, the state told me that we're at the point now where you guys decide whether you want the council to have this one or the mayors to have this one. Well, and actually, then, he was ours anyways. Chris was? Chris was. Yeah. So... Yeah, so, so what you're saying is, it's, yeah, the next there's yeah. two more. Is the new law that two more board appointments are going to be made? No, or or somebody's coming off in the city, and that's where it gets at, the gray area. Like, there's no like time limit, and so from what they explained, the state explained to me, like, since there's one up, then you guys decide which one, like, whether the council gets it or the mayors get it, and then when the next one comes up, it goes to the next person, okay? Uh, just yeah. 
Who's, so, who's that next? well, Chris said he would like to continue it, but you guys have to decide whether you want yeah. the council to get that vote or the, the mayors. And then I think, Zach, is this right? If the mayors, if you pick the mayors, each mayor has to pick three people and then they give you the list of three people and then you have to pick from that list. That's correct. Okay, yay, I got that right. It's very complicated. Um, next up at tw uh, 1231-2024, Dr. Avery comes off, Dr. Crosdale comes off, um, and then the other ones aren't until 2025. So. But those are, at least one of those has to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. I uh, What's your thoughts? Leave our appointment as it is and let the mayors pick the next one. But the next one has to be a doctor. I mean, it, it, it's, it's specific. Well, this one yeah. for Chris Marshall was actually just a layperson, general public. I think so. They've also changed all this, They've changed all that too. All the criteria for who can sit on the boards. So that, that can be, um, over it this morning. It's like they've added an attorney who's experienced in health matters, our <coughs> nurses, physicians' assistants. Um, they added like other public health professional, yeah. including epidemiologists. And it just has to fall in to those categories. Correct. Any of them. Anybody has to fall within those except mm -hmm. the two um, lane. Five persons. Must fall within these categories, yeah. at least two of whom must be licensed physicians. So five of seven must fall within the selection criteria. It sounds like the one that's coming up is none of those five. Correct. So it's kind of an open slate. Uh, well, he was originally an educator, so that he did fall in. Uh, yeah, he probably retires. would have fallen well, in. Well, I think they added superintendent. Was that an addition or was that already there? I think that was I think there. that was there because we had Burley Goodman okay. on there for years. Yeah. yeah, it was an educator. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I I mean, you guys chime in. I'd like to leave him on there and you know, let the city pick the next one because it'll be. It, so it's not going to be an easy pick, but I mean, it, it right. could be. It could be because it's just a doctor. You know? Right. I. I think you have to pick whether you want to send this appointment to the council or the mayors, right, Zach? Well, let me do the math here. Okay. <clears throat> My strong suit. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I thought I was reading. This is what one you of those said was things. We, we would have, you, this could be our choice, and the next one would now, go to the mayor. Yeah, you already got your choice. So now this choice, because you guys picked Geraldine, right? Yeah. And, um, well, Chris just filled a position. Gary Hubbard. Chris just filled a position, yeah. correct. But those were two resignations. So yeah. <coughs> so we, we, under the new rule, we retain five of one. You want Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. To see Dr. Avery, I think, even filled a position. Yes, I think so. Yeah, it got really complicated because we have people that we retain and six appointments. One of our appointments, one of the appointments now is the county fiscal body. That appointment has to be someone who either has public health knowledge or is a member of the general public. So it could be in there, yeah. One. That's what I got from that. But I think that's there because. Of our six appointments, five of them must be within that selection criteria. One can be from the general public, from you guys. But of our five, <coughs> two of our appointments um, I believe that we have to consult with and consider the three recommendations from each executive of the county's two most popular municipalities. So the question, Jane yeah. Robbins was fit one of the criteria before as a health worker. Social worker. Social worker. Mm -hmm. You had her down here in the general public, so 
she should have fell into one of those specialized mm -hmm. categories. Yep. So I just saw that. I just, because I always thought she would fell into that social, uh, uh, social worker type criteria and not just a line. So what are, what are you telling us we need to do? I think it's, I think it's up to you guys. Basically, if that's what this health, the state health department is saying in terms of who we give the next appointment to, like whether we say kind of fiscal body, you get your that that you get your appointment now. When the next one rolls off, we one of the mayors get one. One of the mayors, the mayors will. Um, well, it's only the executive, the most populous municipality. So that's okay. just Scottsford. Oh, okay. I thought it said the both the two. Um, that is for counties with a population of greater than two hundred thousand. Okay, so it would only be Scottsford. Yeah. Um, but then they give a list of three names they and bring list, them back to the. They give a list of three <coughs> names make it. who qualify within the selection criteria, and you all pick from those three. The three names. Okay. So the next, the next appointment, the, the mayors would pick. Not actually, the they make they establish a three person list. You all still appoint that person. Well, it looks like there's two coming off at the same time, and both of them are doctors. And we have to have two doctors on the board, so uh, not gonna have it'd be easy peasy decisions. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I know one wants to continue. I don't know about the other ones. So, Barry, what you, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think we have to put a point on there now with uh, this one to stay on and I'll certainly support that. Randy, what's your thoughts? No, I don't care. <laughs> All right. I think we, uh, I think we leave Chris on as our appointment and the next one the mayors can choose who they want. Okay, we can do that back. Or with the motion, I'm sorry. That's the, so we can leave Chris on? Yeah. Well, no. Um, That's because what I was we have to give one to the fiscal body. But okay. there's only one up. Yeah. Yes. So we have to decide if it's going to be the council you or can decide the right. council whether the mayor give that to the council or send it to the mayor for a recommendation of three names that you will choose from. So you're saying one of the, that the council, county council has an appointment on this board. Now. Right. Effective this is new. As a oh, okay. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is new. I They've see. never had all one of this. Board. Okay. All that, of the, that's where the board yeah. composition has completely changed this past year. Um, or not composition, the select, but whatever it is. Their composition is the political party affiliation. So if we say, okay, the mayors are going to do it, the next appointment is going to be from the council. Correct. I'd say give the mayors the, the appointment. That's one. All right. So we'll authorize the mayor of Scottsburg to send us three names, I guess. Or I guess if he doesn't <coughs> get three names, we say we'll just retain the person he had. We get, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. That was so does it no I longer know. have to do anything with Republican and Democrat? No, it they, still does. That's still in there. That's a whole. Yeah. That this is. That's a whole other. This is subject. solely. Membership selection criteria; those political party affiliations has to do with compositional requirements. Also, and I know you're new, and I know Michelle. Uh, Michelle and I talked about it. Or actually, she came to this board. We all talked about it, is that state of Indiana doesn't acknowledge your you're either Republican or you're a Democrat. Yes, you're not I remember all that mess. Yes. So, but. And I will credit Michelle for this. I went and looked at the, there's like a recent case that came down talking about that entire issue. 
Um, and what it said is that there are certain types of positions where you must be a part of a particular political party to hold that appointed position. This is just a you cannot exceed this threshold for a total board composition and distinguish between those two situations. So as long as we do not exceed the amount by one political party, it's not that we could not have, for instance, I think our situation was we had independents mm -hmm. who fit the bill. It was not that they were per se disqualified from holding that position because they did not belong to a political party, but more so that the board itself could not have a greater number of members of one political party or another. So I think you can have was, three and three. You could have three, three, and one independent, you yeah. know, or, or you know, libertarian or, you know, green well, party, whatever. Yeah. Um, you just couldn't have five of <clears throat> one political party. And just because somebody was a uh, not a member of a major political party and they might not be able to fill certain positions that that statute that Michelle and I were talking about says that you can't fill, that doesn't apply to this type of say. Okay. All right. Even more complicated in the end. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next is the position description for our environmental health specialist. So this is the new person, the new Tim, that we're going to hire um, with our Health First Indiana money after the first of the year. The new law states that if you have a new position that is being paid with Health First, you have to post it for 30 days at least. So I need to get it posted now. But there are a couple things on the description that we wanted to take out because they were really specific, and I don't think I can find anybody to <coughs> fill that. Um, and I sent, I sent it to you guys too, but I should have highlighted what I was talking about. So on everything pretty much looks fine on the description, but the second page at the very bottom, it says must hold a bachelor or higher degree from accredited college or university, which we want to keep in there. I called a lot of other health departments and that's pretty much what they require. It's just a four year degree. But on this qualification, it says and have satisfactorily completed at least 45 quarter hours or 30 semester hours of academic training in the basic physical, chemical, biological, or sanitary sciences. So I wanted to take that part out and just make it just a four-year degree so it's not so specific. And then the other thing is on the next page at the very top, it says must have been employed full-time in the field of environmental sanitation for at least a period of two years within the preceding five years. So I either need to take those out or just put recommended instead of must. You go back. Mm -hmm. it's, you're not, I don't think this is a situation where you need to go back and, for instance, do what we normally do, which is have get an approval for a position. I mean, we're just basically making a slight alteration to decrease or alter, you know, uh, the criteria that we're using. I, I, all the criteria is fine. Um, it's just if you want to change that, I think you can do that at your discretion. So you want to take it out? Mm -hmm. It's probably simpler. Yes. I'm good with that. You guys good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Greg, did you want to discuss the property in Leota? I know you guys can't vote anything on it, but like what next steps are? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. good. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mike called me uh, the end of August, 1st of September on the property, and I didn't know if maybe he went by it when he went out to Leota Frolic or what, but I just thought it was kind of coincidental. And a couple I of weeks. To him. Oh, okay. Well, probably it was on his way out there. He went by. Oh, I went and, by it. Yeah, and then a couple of weeks later, you called. Um, Mr. Neese owns the property. It's not quite two acres. It's on what we call Big Ox Road, right at where it tees into Leo. It's better now than it was three or four years ago when people were living there. But it still was is has grown up. There hasn't anybody lived there probably for a couple of years, has mm -hmm. at least. So anyway, it's it's grown up. And, and uh, the buildings uh, are not in the best of shape. 
there's two mobile homes and there's a small shed. Yeah, that's what there is. So there's three structures actually. The shed's very small, but it's got a lot of trash in it and stuff. Uh, so starting out, uh, he wanted me to get the, the grass mowed. So we, we, we got that accomplished. And he said, well, then what's the next step? I mean, you ask. And I said, well, we do have an unsafe building ordinance that we sometimes use. We use it on average about once a year. That's what, because I looked back, the last two times that we did it was a new Frankfurt church, mm -hmm. or a school, always we'll call it a church, school, and then the, the uh, Seekman property, I was showing some pictures, and I've got some too, yeah. The Seekman property, and um, on Lover's Lane, we do, did those in uh, 21, and then the one before that we did on, in 20, it was a burnout on 356. We didn't do it in 22. So we average one a year, basically. Um, here, are, here is the ordinance, and I've highlighted uh, some things. I bet you guys would rather have money passed to you every time instead of all this paper, but mm -hmm. that's the best I can do. Uh, and I highlighted a few things uh, there. Basically, when the ordinance was written in 07, it was, I think, as much for anything, burnouts. Had a, you know, we always have a bunch of burnouts. Insurance pays or don't pay. After two or three years, nothing gets done. It's just left, you know. And so that was one of the main things we wanted to try and get rid of. But anyway, so we came up with the ordinance here, and I just highlighted a few things it says, you know, there in C, after inspection by the Board of County Commissioners uh, to be unsafe. And then E uh, says there's a hearing. G's the big one here, in my opinion. And it has a lot of legalese in it that maybe Zach can explain. But it says uh, authority to determine compliance any provision hereof which provides for the approval or direction of the Board of County Commissioners or any other officer of the county shall be construed as giving such person, in other words, I think me or other people, only the discretion to determine whether compliance with the rules established, standards established by this section have occurred. So my job is to go out there and look at it and go through the next two pages and tell you some of the things that it doesn't meet the criteria or it does meet criteria. And in the past, that's what I've always done, and I did that this time and sent you the letter. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you go on to read, it says, and not as giving such person, again, me, any discretionary powers as to the substance of such rules and standards nor any power to require conditions not prescribed by this section, nor any power to enforce these uh, section provisions in an arbitrary instrument. In other words, I don't have any authority to do anything according to this. It's you guys that have the authority. So as we've done in the past, you guys were on the board when we did New Frankfurt, when we did uh, Seacamp, or Seacamp was his name, yeah property. I did the pictures. I brought the pictures to you guys, the paperwork and stuff. Then it was up to you guys to decide what you want to do. And including, and I know Zach sent an email saying that we needed to set up a meeting. Um, and, and I don't know if Zach had actually even seen, you know, our ordinance on that. But I, I did bring the last three and it was always the county attorney that did that. So, you know, uh, I'm figuring maybe the county attorney ought to do that because... I, see, I think the last ones were done by Josh Stiglitz. Uh -huh. so yeah, the last two and then the one before was... Uh, yeah, uh, you're right, you're yeah. right. And so you didn't know what we had been doing, how we did it, you know. But, uh, and, and there's multiple reasons. Number one, you get a letter from a lawyer, you're going to open that before you get a letter from the health department. Everybody just knows that. Yeah. Uh, second of all, you guys are elected officials. 
I'm fourth removed from that. Yeah. You recommend the health officer, the health officer hires Brittany, Brittany hires me. I'm too low on the totem pole to make someone spend this kind of money. Now, I've got you know, grass ordinances, I've got trash ordinances, $200, $250. I don't mind signing off on them and enforcing them. This can cost four or $5,000, yeah. you know. I, I don't, uh, I'm not brave enough to. <laughs> I don't have to a do. problem with how, okay. that, how okay. it's worked before, because yeah. uh, we held the hearings in here and man, they were, you know, I think everything went just fine. I mean, um, we pretty much said, hey, you know, you need to clean it up. Uh, doesn't meet standards, there's unsafe practices. I mean, some of them was, you know, using a portal wet as a sanitation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, place and um, they all worked out to, our, to everybody's benefit, neighbors and everybody else. And I think we can continue to do that. Um, what I'd like to see happen in the next in this next year is um, to clean up our ordinances that says, especially cars and vehicles and everything else. We have ordinances. We just don't, don't enforce You're exactly them. right. And 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 also the trash. I mean, uh -huh. not just this but not this just this place, but there's other places um, in my district and, and I'm sure there's in other districts that yep. uh, are eyesores to the neighbors, they're eyesores to people driving down the road and 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 uh, so I you know I'm gonna say right now we're gonna push this board's going to push to tighten those up, or if they're good enough the way they're read, then we're going to enforce them more. And um, so the problem is, like you say, they're written <clears throat> to clean up. They're written to do this. They're written to do that. We can send letters. We can send letters. But if they just throw them in the trash, yeah. what's the next step? Well, and that's what yeah. I'm saying. What, what is the next? step? We need to clean the next yeah, step. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so. And there's all kinds of things. I agree with you 100%. 100%. Well, I mean, but anyway, in this particular case, Greg's never been through this process before, so he didn't know. And that's why I wanted to come tonight so, you know, you can see what we're doing. Everybody be on the same page with this specific, you know. And so I'm sure you've been by it. You've been by it. Randy, I don't know if you have. It's yeah. way out at Leota. But anyway, you can see what's there. And I've decide how it reached out to me. Sure, to sure. Start. I know, I and, and I know our neighbor. I understand. I, I understand. I now, now, and and the one that, the way you seem to be talking was that it's unoccupied, so there's stuff that's illegal going on there from time to time. That's what's been related to me. Okay, so I would say two things. Number one, there's no need to send a certified letter to that the address on the tax roll because if you do. It just, it'll just come back. There's no mailbox there. Uh, there's nothing there. So it'd, be, it'd come back. Most of our ordinances say that if you do that, then it counts as notifying, even if we you know, get it returned. This ordinance doesn't specifically say that. On the GIS, can't you do notice by publication? On the GIS has the landowners his actual address on yeah. the GIS. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the physical address of the board that we're talking about. It yeah. has his. Okay. Well, if we know his address. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> good luck in, in getting it to him. Now, uh, <laughs> second of all, uh, there is a place where we was talking about, you know, things going on there that shouldn't be done. And I've heard, you said you heard the police were called. I took Oh, I actually okay. call them and ask them to do a welfare check there to see if somebody was living there. So. Okay. So anytime police show up, there should be a police report. So get those, and that's pretty much, you know, if, if you've got a police report that says, okay, there's something going on there that shouldn't be going on, that, that qualifies as being an unsafe building. So that's kind of cut and dry there. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew we're probably as far as we're going to go on this because we probably wouldn't do any good to do any further. And you guys have done it before. So yeah. I figured we'll just keep doing it the way that it works. Yeah. Well, and again, when it, we had the hearings, it, we got a, a yeah. decent resolution because we can tell them if you can't clean it up, we, we will clean it up and send you a 
are added to your taxes yeah. that you know you you know these people are paying their taxes so it's just on their tax tax sure, bills. Sure, so. sure. Now the property's mm -hmm. worth a lot of money because there's a lot just on the corner there of uh, Leota yeah. that has an empty mobile home that's listed for a hundred and some odd thousand dollars. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you probably know, for more if this one. <laughs> probably so. You're probably right. So I just wanted to make okay. sure you, uh, you know, we, we got all together. Like I said, Zach wasn't here the last time we did. You know, so. I think I came in, was hired like right in the middle yeah, of yeah. the last thing, and I think Tanisha. Yeah, she did. And like I said, their, their letters are there. You can keep those or throw them away or whatever, but you see what they've done in the past. Like, yeah, those are just extra copies. All right, so I just want to make sure. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, guys. Probably, Appreciate even it. If I, even if I draft the letters, I mean, I obviously probably have to <coughs> see what you guys have in terms of the yes, I did. what's been done in the past and what you might see as a... Well, like I said, that's pretty well, I mean, literally what I've done in the past is right here. I send this to the commission, and I list out from the, you know, uh, ordinance. Oh, what yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything on this particular property oh, okay. on that okay. fact that says, hey, I think that this is a public health measure for X reason. Right. Perfect. <laughs> And I don't know if you need a picture or not, but this is what they were showing. Yeah, if you could, you want, is, there a way, is there a way to send these to me via oh, sure. email? Sure, that sure, you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. And that way we can do that in the future too, because we sure. all do this. Is that the best way then? Just that's go ahead and send it directly just, to you? Yeah, just okay, to okay. Well, that's what we'll do. Whenever one of the commissioners yeah, well, asks me to do that, I'll just send it directly to him and he can talk to you and set the meeting up. That'd be Take great. Care. All right, yeah. sounds great. Thank you so Thank much. All right, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Looks like uh, we have a, a, another cell phone stipend request for me. This would be for Major Campbell, yes. He, uh, he did provide, the um, same way as all the other positions did, a request outlining the basis. I can tell you from my experience, he's been more than any time today. Yeah, uh, or And, or not. and um, this is just for his position only, it's a, just the, the IT director, um, and it would be effective upon the passage of signing. I think a copy of the resolution is sitting in front of Jeff, or, yeah. Okay. Well, we, we've done these before, so um, I'll entertain a motion to pass the cell phone stipend request for our IT guy. Um, I thought we already did this. I thought we did it too, but we did some money. So, <laughs> so Randy uh, makes the motion to uh, allow the resolution for a cell phone, cell phone stipend for Andrew Campbell in the IT department, Greg. I'll say, Greg, second set, I'll make it unanimous, so. Michelle. So I am here just to finish the annexation pro process that we started um, from 2021, 22, and 23. Um, I was here in late August, early September, I don't remember, um, and made the presentation of the city's have the annexations we have now sent to the state, followed all the rules, procedures, and it's now just to you guys to finish up the annexation steps. So what do we have to do on our end? You have to pass it. Okay. So this is where, is this off of York Road? This is, um, well, there's there's three. There's the one in, from Jennings 2 to Jennings 5, um, and that parcel. Um, is that Boo Road? Yes. That one is, that's that one. And here is the order. That's north. That's east of uh, Water Tower. Yes. Like here's a picture of it. Yeah. The GSM for that one. 
That one is the 2021 annexations that were requested. Um, and then the 22 is Jennings 3 to Jennings 4. And <clears throat> so right now these properties are farm ground that's not being subdivided as present, yes. but they could in the future. Um, they could, yes, potentially, yes. Um, I think the one that's for 22 would be, this has the flood, a floodplain in it too. Um, that's annexation 22. And then this year's for 23 is over by the Canyon Apartments. And it's a big fill, it's a big the fill behind it. 60, 50 acres. Yeah. And that's the cities, mm -hmm. Scottsburg. The other two are city of Austin. Just everything in the blue. <clears throat> so I guess my question is, you're you're creating uh, or we're entering these into other. Uh, let me back up. So the reason for the annex is that the cities have annexed this, these properties into the city limits. Yes. It, it's not necessarily going to change. The city is requesting yeah. to do that, yes. But, but what's going to happen is if any of these places, uh, I guess I'm talking about county, but what I'm looking at is that if these large areas, 50 acre fields, became 100, 200 houses with 400, 600 people voting now, that could be an area that in the future has to be maybe uh, cut up, I guess, to say the easiest word, because you have to have equal representation, correct, with districts. That's how they, in the, in the past, and Zach was here when uh, Wendy had to move some stuff around, uh, you have to have, like our three districts have to have equal or close to equal with is it is it fifteen percent ten to fifteen percent within uh each district population wise so that you know one one commissioner doesn't have all the residents in their district and the rest of them have they all have to be not I mean, equal I mean, they have to be within the within a particular yeah and I, and I guess my question is is does this fall into the same category? And I know these are cities, but I mean, would it fall in the same categories as you have a conglomerate of people in this area that are going to have representation from one city councilman or, or would that, would you have to move that around? I mean, or- So I think if I'm understanding your question right, um, talking to, Indiana Election Division, her name is Stephanie. These properties all, there is no set plans to develop these properties right now, and <clears> that goes into a law of the commissioners can't have split precincts, so the way that this would work is that it doesn't fall under that, um, specifically so that, if well, I'm understanding the question. We're yes. years down the road from that being a factor, but Yes. I could see in the future these both places, both and on Boo Road. I mean, that's a massive field out there yes. that could have upwards of two or three hundred homes on it that uh, would fall in that same category. That uh, that's yeah. four, four or five years down the road or longer. Yes, but. I think so. And and like I said, the 2021 and 2022, I inherited when I caucused in, and yeah. I did receive the 23. Um, and I mean, I could have talking to the state said that we could have pushed it off until it was developed, but I don't want to leave. I, I, I wanted to get I get it. I get so. it. But it's going to be a topic down the road in the future. So, yes. all right. Yes. So all we're doing is moving because these these properties, these three properties, were. Uh, annexed into the city of Austin and the city of Scottsburg has one, the city of Austin has two, don't they? Yes. Uh, well, they will be if you guys vote on Yes, there's one in the city of Scottsburg. It's out of Colmer's property. Not now, it's... Yes. But anyway, I, I, yes, that's... 
Yeah, and I have a full plan from the state if you guys want it. I'll read that. <laughs> it to Zach. So. I'm just looking to say, because I know in the past when we moved some districts around, they were they were for population reasoning, and actually we did, when Zach first came on here as our attorney, we had a cleansing, I guess I'm going to say, of, of moving districts because yes. uh, Greg went all the way from Lexington to the north end of Austin, you know, and that made no sense, but it was all about grabbing population. I don't know that we ever did a precinct change during that, though. I think that we did. I think the precincts always stayed the same. We just changed which districts were which precincts, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we changed. I have to go back and we, look at we it. Changed, no, we changed them because, like, we moved back. Like John Miller's district didn't go into Lexington, but now it did. It went from Johnson all the way down to Lexington. They just squared them up, cleaned them up. I mean, okay. where people were grabbing areas because they were populated and I mean, tried to even all that. You're talking about the map that was like had something that was like wrapped around the city, right? Yeah. What we need was working on. Yes. I mean, we approved it, and it, but it cleaned up lots of mess up. But the guy that was a councilman in in uh, Lexington was also representing people in North North Austin. I mean, yes. which made absolutely no sense. But, but yeah, it kind of cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, so I think anyway. all that was cleaned up under the annexation under. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the, th the three annexation uh, proposals for the election uh, for, for precincts. I'll make the motion. Randy makes that motion. Greg? I'll second. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. Okay. Zach, do you want to use the resolution that the city did, or do you want to type one up yourself? Or not the city, the state did? The... I just use the state's form okay. resolution okay. that okay. they had. And yeah. they signed, okay, they signed that and sent it to me. Okay, perfect. All right. That's so who's on that? Huh? I can send it. Oh, okay. All right. All right, is that it? That is it. Thank you very much. And I don't know if we've talked to you since the last election, but I appreciate all your work. And, and I guess I'm going to ask a, the, the big question. How did the uh, uh, two election sites work out since we did we combined them instead of having multiple election sites? Well, so and I know it was a municipal, a municipal election, and we yeah. typically have just two or three in Scottsburg and two in Austin, I think. But um, I think it went great. Um, I mean, we still are considered a precinct voting county right now. We still have not got the vote center approved yet through the state. I haven't heard back from that. Um, but I do have election conference next week, next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I'm going to ask them like the timeline on that. Um, but for the municipal, yeah, we went from two places to vote in the Austin High School, and then it was the Scottsburg High School and the Scottsburg Middle School, but we combined those actually in 2022 election to start to move to that way. But it went, it went well. Parking Good. was great. And it wouldn't, you know, the first year in 2022, everybody's like, wait a minute, where did my place go? But it's now been there for three elections, and we're good. Sounds good. So, all right. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you giving me the band course. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, looks like uh, Nick's not here, but Nick's on the agenda. Let's jump around here. Let's see. Kevin's waiting patiently there. How's Kevin? Not too bad. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you and your crew for coming out to a fire today and oh yeah and uh, bringing a excavator or great all or whatever they end up bringing the excavator yeah, it's great great all get stuck <laughs> but um, it sure uh, took a lot of work off of several firemen that was trying to get hay out of a barn so i bet that's a mess so thank you very much and i know you guys do that multiple times a year yeah. without any kind of recognition on it but I appreciate it. as a farmer and i appreciate it thank you i printed these off for you i sent them an email you guys probably yeah. looked at them but uh no okay. thank you. um 
But anyway, I printed over, printed them off. Thought I, if you got any questions over, uh, basically the contractor from his original schedule. Looks like he's he's about right on schedule. He switched a few things around, ordered that he's going to do it in, but I think he's within a week of of being where he thought he'd be. So they put the beams down. Not yet, but uh, I think they're going to pour the back wall first, which is one thing they kind of switched around, which is no big deal. But the good news is they're they got the pile cap poured, so that gets them up out of the mud. So the weather won't be as big a, a feat, I think. So, but they got the beams bolted together, which that's yeah, a big that. feat in itself. So uh, I think they have three cranes down there when they were doing that. That's what I heard. So anyway, yeah, so far so good on that. I was out there yesterday and um, looked around and see they're in a pretty good spot. We get that cap poured. Oh, okay, I'm trying not to jump around too much. Um, the next quick thing I got is I put Ben Petty's Explorer on Gub Dills. Um, it brought around 4,600. One of my guys brought this up, and I thought, well, I run it past the commissioners. So we always have to try to keep the mowing crew something to drive. Last year, we ended up pulling a uh, old Suburban, 99 Suburban out of the back lot and done a little work to it and got them through. But if you guys are interested in keeping that, just to have it as a backup for the mowing crew. So I they mean, don't have anything now, do they? They have a 99 Suburban, which it's 25. I mean, yeah, it runs. You know, sometimes it takes two when you got work on one to <laughs> have them something to drive while you're working on another one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I guess for 4,600 bucks, you couldn't buy another 100,000 mile vehicle. So, but I mean, that's up to you guys. I know you're trying to get stuff off the county list, but right now they do have something to drive, but I can hit accept or I can hit deny on the, on the option or whatever you want to do on it. So. What's, what's your thoughts, Brandon? <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a question while he's What kind of that. shape is that suburban in? The Suburban, it's body wise. Not, body wise, it's not terrible for a '99 Chevy truck. Is it rusted out? A little bit. I mean, the cab corners are rusted, and, but the the hitch and stuff seems to be pretty solid. Um, we found some paperwork in there. It looks like I had an engine put in it not too awful long ago, replaced. It was uh, I think it's Community Corrections old Suburban, is that tan one. But well, anyway, I think the sheriff's office or somebody dropped it off at the highway department in the back. And we looked it up and it was uh, titled to the board of commissioners, so we just dragged it back out and put some new brakes on it and kind of done a little work to it and got it going for the mowing crew for the summer. And, uh, you know, it panned out, it worked for them. But, uh, so you talking about the cemetery? I'm sorry, the cemetery yeah. crew. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, but like I said, I was like, well, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, it's. We just kind of pay musical trucks with them and try to keep them something to drive all the time. The only thing I I'm going to say, because I wrote it down here, we need to check it again. And I actually need to get with our insurance company and make sure that they're staying on top of it, is that we found in the past that we had a lot of equipment that had full coverage on it. And it didn't need to have full coverage on it. It needed to have yeah. liability only. And we even had trailers that were three thousand dollar trailers having full coverage on them, and and it may be in yeah. nickels and pennies, but it's still why are, why are we paying a you know for full coverage on something when we can replace it? We should be pretty cleaned up on that at the highway department. But it had a lot on there from yeah. stuff we've sold that was sitting out back in the weeds for a long time. How many um, miles is the uh, suburban? A hundred thousand. The suburban only has. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, um, oh, I think it's in the twos, I think. I think that was a county sheriff's vehicle. It might have been. I say sell the suburban and keep the Explorer. That's a Ford <laughs> guy. Say <laughs> guy. No, <way. laughs> no uh, it ain't that. I, I'm actually a Chevy guy. You know this. But... Uh, <laughs> But, I don't know. I think they're I, both piece of junk. Uh, Here would be with my suggestion. I mean, and I'll honestly let's keep them. <laughs> drive them till they break, and then I'll sell it on good deals. And whatever it brings, it brings. You know, somebody else can put a motor in one or a transmission in one. I mean, that's 
I mean, they're running down to where they're not worth a whole lot of money, you know. I know. Three yeah. or four thousand bucks and run it to say the oil tranny's out and then pick like up deals, transmission's out. Explorer's probably a little bit nicer vehicle. It is, but you're talking about something you're putting gas cans and weed eaters in. So yeah. that ain't gonna be nice long. <laughs> well, for not yeah. more what it is, I'll say to keep it and let them guys use it and gives them backup to it if something happens. Okay. I'll just hit the nine. Right. I'll pretend like Randy said not to sell those bourbon. <laughs> well, why, what what shapes the tires? And actually, we did put about eighteen hundred dollars in the front end of it last year. Of the suburban? Yeah. You did what? Put about eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> in it. It don't take long. I know. Uh, to, to get it all going. When we pulled it up there, we didn't think it needed much. And by the time it left, it needed a lot. <laughs> There's a reason it was in the back lot. And you got new tires on? Uh, I don't know about new, but. This the Explorer does. It's got yeah, the tires on it. So. Does. That's why I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. It's got over a thousand dollars of the tires on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that'd be the best bet. Just run it till it quits and when I'm quitting and sell them. All right. Sounds good. Okay. That's Talk all. Talk me into it. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Especially after spending eighteen hundred dollars in front of you. Yeah, I know you got some money, yeah. Huh? Like a rock, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see. CCMG. I have something for that. Okay, small structure uh, replacement. Anyway, I'm going to apply for five structure replacements for CCMG in a 2024 1 call, which would come up in January. Um, I like to use Civil Con for design contracts on that. Uh, Andrew and I went out and located five that we believe is on a that would be good candidates for it. Uh, they're in all different districts. Um, it'd probably be around around that mark, million three, you know, somewhere in that area. The time it's all said and done, uh, their their contract reads on the design. If it's, it's basically specific. So if we didn't get the funding, then we're, we're just paying them the work that they've done. You know, they're not doing the bid documents or anything. We didn't to get the funding to, to put out the bid. Uh, but I, I think we will. So um, what, what bridge is that? That's five different structures, oh, small, structures small structures that we've identified. Mm -hmm. So Cutshaw Main Street, uh, Bridgewater, uh, Bloomington Trail, and there's another one that was blank on. But there's five structures in there. Uh, so that need that are in pretty rough shape, which is a lot of money. Um, so yeah, that was one direction we wanted to do our CCMG this year and then kinda That's gonna rest there. Yeah. That would uh, USI have done our small structure study. I think in January we should get a hundred structures back. That was inspected and see what shape they're in, but these five here that we've identified, it don't take a whole lot to know that they need to be replaced. But that'll give us an idea on where we need to be um, and how many millions of dollars is laying out there. We'll get a better idea at it. Yep. So that's that. Um, Jarek had called me and he wanted me to bring this to you guys a speed study, and I may have steered him wrong. I don't know. Um, did you talk to him about double or nothing row? Okay. I just talked to him about can well, we find a way to reduce the cost of a speed study? I got a question. Did we do the speed ordinance no. at our last meeting? No. Uh, no, because we it wouldn't pass because it didn't fit the rural urban area. No, no, no. You're talking about for the bridge twenty eight. Twenty eight. No, because I wouldn't hear. No, we didn't do anything about the speed study. Well, that speed study's been done. That speed study's already been done. Yeah, all we're doing is pass the ordinance for bridge 28 for 45 miles per hour. But I know we advertised it. And we did for our next meeting? Well, I'm not sure. You know, we're around sure that bridge 28. Either. I had to back up on that one. I'm not sure. On that one. You're talking about the one on the other road? Yes. Which the speed study's done on it. Yeah, that was done in the... But I asked him at the convention last week if there's anything we can figure out how to <clears throat> do a speed study without 
costing seven thousand dollars. So that that is our on call contract to the highway department, and he called me and said, "What road is that?" I said, "Well, this is probably what he's talking about." I told him where it was at, and so he wanted me to, to bring that to you to show you what the it looked like the cost would be to do do so. And I don't know that that necessarily says they can take the speed down. That's just doing the study for you. I thought the street stay cost twenty. Do what? Um, we always thought it cost it was, twenty thousand. It was no, that was for like seven yeah, different. Was seven that different. That was a quote on multiple speed studies for different roads. Six or seven uh, different gotcha. roads. I sent this in the like Did we advertise this? That's um, I'm on a thought. It's quite a specific short. Let me, let me check it. Because we can put it on the next one. It'll be fine. Yeah. I'm not sure if it went through. To I, sent I know we talked about it, but I don't know that. I sent it on the percent That it ever got there or not. Because that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Soon. Uh, with that being said, um, originally we did we did complete our application for the federal aid and got it submitted. Uh, we have some work to do, so some things we got to come up with on the ADA, ADA and Title VI. And, but that needs to be corrected for the whole county. It's not really just I mean it is the highway department, but it's I think it could affect everybody in the county as far as all that stuff. Um, you as I talk. Talk to me, and I guess maybe talk to you guys about they could probably help clean it up. I'm done talking to Jennifer on some things that they need. We're trying to we're trying to round up some information for them. Because uh, to be honest with you, I'm not 100 percent sure what all we need on that end of things. Uh, but it involves, I guess, every every property, every building for the county has to have an ADA checklist. So we got to locate that uh, and get it to get it to them. And then they'll be able to tell you guys, hey, this is what we would charge to to clean it up for you. But right now they can't really give us a price because they don't know what they're getting into. <laughs> so I guess we'll, so. Anyway, hopefully by next meeting we'll have that to present. But we're working on it. We basically got 120 days to get it cleaned up and get it back to to end dot and uh, to be no. compliant. Because then we're not compliant. Too. Which goes by quick. <laughs> 120 days. Yeah. A bill of cement. <laughs> we we basically done the bake the cap letter, which is prom uh with Jennifer saying, you know, we're we know we're not applying and we're got 120 days that we're going we're going to bring everything, get everything cleaned up, and yeah. get it right. Did you reach out to Midwest? You said. Uh, yeah, on the dump sites. So, on the dump sites of things, we reach out to. Um, environmental man mm -hmm. who sent me to another company that does it. So I had to set up an account through them and we sent samples to them. They said give them five days. We sent it out last Thursday. Um, and they would, the uh, Clark County Dump gave me a list of things that they wanted to test it for. And they're going to test for those things and then send it back to me. And then I fill the paperwork out and send it back to Clark County Dump. And then they'll let us know, A, if we'll take it, I guess, mm -hmm. to what it costs to take it. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we're at with that. We honestly went out to Stacy's Tesco, dug it all up, took it down to Clark County, and then found out that they won't take it without uh, paperwork to go with it. So we got it stored at the shopping trucks till we get the right paperwork to. How many trucks have we tied up? Three. So, but I mean, it's that time of year, so uh, we're. They're all your district trucks too, so they're bumming everybody else's <laughs> trucks. <laughs> so they're bumming around everybody else's trucks right now. But hopefully, maybe by the end of the week, I'll have that paperwork back so the first of next week we can get rid of that stuff. <clears throat> and then we went out and took a sample in Lexington's now that we knew what we had to do, and we got it sent off too. Um, we did something with Fenway too. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, if I, were, I got a phone call. Uh, speaking of that, uh, while we're, I guess, on that subject, um, what would it, I mean, I had some, had some people tell me that, because it's, I guess, winter time, gets darker, five o'clock or whatever, well, that site's open till seven, and it's, I guess, pitch dark out there, and they were wanting to know if we would put a security light or 
or a pole light out there that we can they can walk over and turn off or turn on. Um, but I don't know what the REMC, what it, it used to be like 10 bucks for a security light a month. I mean, I don't know how much it'd be, probably. But at least that. We'll find out. We need to find out. We need to probably do that. So Always just easy. the safety of the people trying to dump their stuff why they're there and not yeah. being in the pitch dark. And he's running a piece of machinery in the dark, or she is. And yeah, it also discourages things. Yes. Um, so we need to look into what a security light would cost us out there from our At the family? Out the family. Or do you want all of them? Uh, that was I Texas think Stacy's is lit. Uh, I like the Lexington's lit, I think. But it's, I know this one's not. It's just pitch dark. But if, if we find the price of one, uh, Jackson County's probably does is at Stacy's as well. So yeah, it's, so it'd be the same price either way. And there's power. Well, I don't know if there's power there or not, but runs down the road or somewhere. I got got jumped around. Let's go back to Silicon. Uh, <laughs> I need to, uh, if you agree with that, I need to get that signed so I can have my stuff ready by January 1st. So this is for the community crossing grant? It is. I'll entertain them. Well, you know what? Yeah. Any questions? No. Great. I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept Kevin's proposal for uh, community crossing ramp for 2024 uh, for uh, what is that? Several. There'll be five different structures. They'll do the design on them, and, and then they'll go out to bid, and then okay. the contractor can figure out what they. I want to take a motion to accept his proposal for the community crossing ramp. I'll make that motion. Randy makes that motion. Greg. I'll second. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. Go after that money. Try to get it. Hope they don't run out. <laughs> uh, they're gonna you, run out. They just print more. You want to jump back to the speed study? Do you want to do that, or do you I hold? hold you want to table that? I'm thinking about that. I'm not the, trying to single out one road. And uh, I know Greg had looked at one, but we've seen that look like that. I don't know if they were roads like that, but they price it around two thousand bucks, but. We can get another estimate for that spot. So I thought that was I mean, seven compared to Jennifer's got seven yeah. too. Um, seven compared or two compared to seven is what going in the right direction anyway. Okay, uh, the software company. Yes. Going back to that. Yeah. Did you not say that you thought you, or you were looking into it that you guys could do that? What's that? That speed study. Yeah, I am looking into it. I think there's a possibility that we can. Uh, I mean, it's good. Uh, Most of the time they put a counter down. And yeah. I don't think it's out of the. Because we talked around that we could get it done a lot cheaper. And, uh, I really haven't checked into it much more. I haven't had time, but I think there's a possibility. We can definitely get the equipment. Uh, we, can, we can both. Oh, that cool. Long that out to us. Uh, let me let me check too to see if we have. I mean, maybe Indot has some accounts already. Yeah, LTAP has a, a equipment loan program, and uh, you just you sign up for it, and when it's available, they'll they'll send it to you, and you can use those things that they have radar guns, that, anything, the signs that has the speeds on it. As long as they're available, you put yeah, your name in. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. We'll just guess. <laughs> Everybody's speeding, but we'll put down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll keep checking into that. I, I definitely think it's a possibility, though. Um, okay, software. Uh, I've been talking to these companies for like over a year. Um, I have three bids. This bid that came back. It is isn't complete because they offer the customer service side of things, but they don't offer the fleet side of things. So they wasn't they're a little bit cheaper, but they're half the work of what we needed done. So they didn't really bid what I needed. But these two are comparable apple to apple bids. 
Um, one is through called Brightly Software. Uh, sent these exact, I've sent them to Andrew to have him look over the IT side of things and the software side of things. And uh, he gave them both a thumbs up on the IT side of things. Um, this one, one they actually do. So both of them offer similar options, but iWorks is the one I like the best. So it's actually the best price too. So I'll talk about it. Um, on the customer service side of things, they actually, they'll, they'll go into our county website and put a link where somebody can put a work request in through that. And they'll also build us a app. Like a resident. Yes, like a resident. They'll also build us an app. So you can download the Scott County Highway app. You want to put a work request in, it's simple as typing, you know, your address, this, picture, send. It generates a, a, a work request, request to, to us. And then we can set it however we want you to respond back. You know, hey, we got your we got your request, and then we could get in there and say, you know, we got your request as a ditch. You know, it may be a year, or if it's a site issue, hey, we'll try to get this corrected in the next week or whatever. Um, it also it has the option to where if we get calls uh, for work requests, it's got a map on it. You can just drag the pen, type all the information in to keep the spreadsheet of the work request. So they're, they're never gone, they're never lost, and they're documented when they're called in. Um, so they're time stamped. They're time stamped. And, and a lot better than the sticky note system for sure. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it also gives my road bosses, I mean, we'll be able to, to, to either access it electronically or we can just print it, you know, if you're going to go out and do work requests, we can print all the work requests right there off the, kind of try to take them in order when they was called in and so on and so forth. So that's the customer service side of things that, that they do. And that's just a small amount of it. The other part was fleet maintenance. So you can, uh, it's very large. It depends how deep you want to get into it. But, you can put every vehicle into it, and it'll also marry to our WEX system, our fuel cards. So you can set it up once you get to the initial setup. Uh, you, know, you go put fuel in a dump truck, you, you put in the, mile, the mileage, it generates the system, and it'll actually generate emails and say, hey, you know, you're in the red, you need that move maintenance to this vehicle this time. Or we can go in and we can set it up if it's like a grader that we don't use that much every six months. It, it sets it up to come in and, and do maintenance to it. Uh, the one thing I liked about it was we can also attach all our, what we're spending on the equipment to that piece of equipment to the software and it'll track it. So, you know, if you end up putting $30,000 on a, in a 99 Suburban, <laughs> it'll, it'll go, it'll turn red and tell you that, that this vehicle is probably costing you more. <laughs> yeah, this vehicle. Costing you more money than than it's worth, so it hopefully helps us for for fleet maintenance. We could take it to the council and say, hey, "Listen, this is what we spent on this particular piece of equipment. Let's get it to the point where it's, it doesn't make sense." So, uh, but yeah, it's 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 very large on what it, it <coughs> opportunities that you can do with it. Um, it also has an option where you can go through and log all your signs in the county, every single one of them. So you can pull up a map and know where every single sign in the county is and actually have it run an inventory and know how much is actually out there and where it is and if it is missing, you know it's missing. And, and uh, which is a process, but it's, you know, they help you through it to get it set up. Um, so. so what's the scary part? Well, it, we're budgeted for it. I asked the council for a budget for it, so it wasn't, it isn't that bad. Let's see what this one is. So the first year's 10 5, and then every, but the, uh, every year is 9,000 on this one for the upkeep subscription. To, uh, No, I'm gonna take that back. Every year's ten five is what it is. So the first year's ten five, and this is ten five every other year. I uh, they changed some prices. I've done some negotiating. We started out over my budget, so this is what you I got. This so is what I got them down to. Um, you have a budget. 
Yeah, I have a budget. Well, budget. I think anytime we have a twelve thousand dollar budget for software. This is a one year contract. They wanted me to do a three year, but they wanted to put a five percent increase on a yearly what on a yearly increase. But I, you know, I told them I can't. We can't sign an increase every year because I can't tell you I'm getting a five percent increase every yeah. year. So we went back down to we'll just do a yearly, you know, a yearly contract on it, and maybe if. The next year, if they'll agree to a three year with no increase, but they wasn't willing to do that, I wasn't willing to say we would sign it any other way. So, is there any, and I don't know if you could ask this question, is there any benefit for our insurance uh, company for us to have a program? that like you're talking about with the, with the equipment especially mm -hmm. it's showing hey we have a maintenance program and and we know when that truck needs brakes or that truck needs oh you know yeah i don't know uh that's something i could ask there's definitely a chance of that sometimes if you have that program that they know hey you know they have it but also are they keeping up with it i mean but if you have if you're spending the money for it then odds are you're you're keeping up with the maintenance for those vehicles and right uh, i don't know if there's any cost savings that the insurance could say you know hey that checks the box that they have a program uh, so i don't know uh, yeah that's something we could ask is that if you're budgeted for it and uh, the council agreed that hey because uh, i think it's an, a good idea i mean i kind of had something like that with with ours when i worked for ups but you know, we had a agreement with Penske that Penske had that that program, so they knew when our trucks, you know, hit the fuel aisle and what the mileage was, and they knew, hey, that they'll, they'll red flag it and say, hey, we need to change oil or we need to do X, Y, Z on it. So this one, it also has the pavement management side of things that um, that you can get into too. It's kind of like a GSI on that, but uh, uh, I haven't really looked into it. I was really interested in the fleet management and the and the, the work management side of it right now. Well, I kind of like the sign side and of the sign. it because right now we're losing signs. I mean, we just paid $35,000 for all brand new signs and they're they're leaving like uh, cockroaches. Or yeah, something, they're, so. they're definitely leaving a district uh, three. He uh, he brought me on a list, and, and now it's starting to be uh, bridge marker signs and, and the curve signs. And did the sheriff reach out to you? He did, and uh, they came up to the office and spent some time uh, the other day. And they're they've been to some houses, and they're they're online, and I think they're they're doing some good. So hopefully, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. If that was ten five, and I think I was supposed to read this this other one. It was twelve thousand four hundred nineteen. Um, what's the price on that? So what's your guys' thoughts of that? I think it's an extra excellent program, and I'm glad we're finally moving up to the 21st century. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like so I said, I've been talking board, to these companies yeah. for a year, so I, I know them pretty good. And we're just now getting there because we didn't have a budget for it. But I put in for it. I'm kind of wondering how many sticky notes are behind the cabinet. <laughs> Yeah, I think when the sticky notes blow off the windshield and out the that side, it's the end up. It's job <laughs> that's done. Yeah. <laughs> it can't get away now. Greg, you got any comments? Or? No, I mean, I, I don't know really <laughs> how you're affected not having a program like that. I mean, yeah, I've, so. been, I've been a fleet manager over my years at the state. <laughs> and I, I couldn't imagine not having software to use. Well, I, we're $5 million worth of equipment over yeah. there. So having us some software, I mean, doesn't seem outside of the, the realm. Yeah. So. Zach, have you looked at this? It's the, it's the software. It's I said software, it to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I reviewed it today. So. Okay. So I want to entertain a motion to allow uh, Kevin to have a software program for his fleet. I'll make that motion. And you said the county council did budget you for this. Yes, yeah, so for 2024. Okay. So that doesn't go into effect year for 2024. Contract, so. Randy, Thanks Randy you. makes a motion. Greg, I'll say. Greg sucks on that. I'm going to say. Man, I'm so going to sign it. Damn, they want your blood type.
So let me know, Kevin, if you start hitting the wall with some of those, that criteria requirements that we need. Yeah, that's going to be on my list tomorrow and all next week, and working with Jennifer too to see what we need to get together to to bring back to the next meeting so we know what it costs to, to get it, however we need to get it. Yes, to get it right. You didn't talk to him at all about the MOU or something with Jefferson County? I did. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. I don't know. Um, we're going to keep that in our pocket. Yeah, good idea. It's, I see a lot of things overcome, but I think it's a great idea <laughs> as far as that goes. Uh, let's see. Before I get into the annuals, the only thing I want to talk to you about is urgents when we approve our urgents on the invo or the invoices um jennifer might be able to correct me if i'm wrong but Maybe. mandy yeah. said there was like an ordinance so um that really on urgents only like utility bills and those kind of things are supposed to be paid through ordinances or through urgents and approved through the commissioners so i just wanted to ask you if we could have a like she said it ain't no problem as long as you guys approve to do it. So say Bridge 105 and uh, my building project, if we could put it on urgency, because some things that we need to buy, we don't need to set up a, a account with the company because it's not something I'm going to buy a lot. It might be this one time. But it's also hard to go a 45-day stretch and get a check. And, and get it somewhere before they start changing prices because prices move around like crazy now. Yeah. So, um, Are you talking about the purchasing ordinance? Or? Yeah, well, it's uh, like if we, like we're going to purchase something, but we're going to get a check cut from the courthouse and they're going to approve it through urgent stuff. You're talking about the claims process. process. Like the claims mm -hmm. process. Yeah. So, uh, you're not talking about a 30 day net, you're talking about. Yeah, if we're gonna slide this in quicker and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, can we get this approved through urgent type thing?" So those projects we can run through because she doesn't, but she's doing her job right, and I'm asking her not to. Basically, I'm asking her to push her through faster and get it through urgent and get them to you so we can move on. Um, so those are the, the projects. Really, just Bridge 105. Uh, I would like to just prove some of those things to so to the. I mean, is there an ordinance out there that you can do that? I mean, do we just give him our blessing? Or do we need to pass something that could be approval? Or the current public purchasing ordinance? You can authorize him as a purchasing agent to make the purchase necessary to fulfill. But it's not the purchase, okay. it's the payment of from the yeah. auditor's office that needs to know, okay. I would not know anything about any type of internal policy or ordinance on that, but. And I have not seen it. She did say something to me about there was something like that, but as long as you guys approve, she just doesn't want to go outside of the realm. I think right. kind of it's a standing thing that if like a say a credit card bill or a utility bill came in, we know we're going to be late. Yes, credit card bill is something that they fall yeah. under utility bill, so they're not late. So basically, so she's, sure she's trying to do it right, and I'm trying to ask her to do it wrong. So I uh, said, so, well, I'll bring it to them and ask them if these projects we could push through to get them through faster, the process, I, basically. I think so. I'm fine with that. I mean, as long as it's going to, you're going to the proper channels with the auditor's office, I mean, right. it's, it's, what's the deal? And the money's there. The, uh, it's just Well, the thing is, like that, those bills, if we pay them, they'll go out Friday. But if we choose not to do that, they will sit until whatever the meeting is in January, and then they'll be paid the Friday after that. That's so if you approve them today, they'll be able to cut a check Friday. Mm -hmm. But if not, it would go in. That's yeah, a good way to explain it. It would go into it, it does January. go a long way. It goes a lot further out. Well, are these in our special yeah. things later? Yes. They'll okay. be in the special invoices. Let's hold on to that. So. Okay. I covered that. <laughs> We're going to go back to these things here. 
Okay. I think we've always said in the past that he opens them, reviews them. We just say you need to open them and announce, you know, the bidders. These are annual bids, right? These are annual bids. Okay. I can do this one first because it's easy. This is from CivilCon, and they are going to roll their bids from last year, bids from last year to this year. So no change in money. Just same stuff, same bid. So they're all they're doing is rolling their services over. So I entertain a motion to accept this one. Or do you? Well, I think we're going to take them all under advisement. Yeah, we just okay. we've we now did all that. <clears throat> I think that's what we did. Okay, first bid is buyers excavating the concrete. And they bid on the contractual service side. And they went through and bid uh, same thing we done last year where they bid uh, their foreman operators and their laborers and all their equipment. Uh, this is how we put together uh, Getty Road and Reed Road was off annual bids and contractual services. So that's uh, why we've asked for these bids. So I have to read all you these. You do not have to read the okay. full amounts. I mean, it, it, we'll, we'll just say the schedule that for each of the different materials is available at the auditor's office for okay. the review. Okay, they're available to look at. So, that's, so what you're saying is a lot of people are bidding for stuff and, and you know, hey, if I need a backhoe or I need somebody to do something, you know a company that's already said, hey, here's what our price is. Yeah, so say this company wanted to, uh, we was going to put in a large culvert or something bigger than what we can handle. Um, if they came in, what I what I do is I require, I require a cap on it so it uh, does not exceed. So they give me a does not exceed of $40,000 and then they go off an hourly wage on their labor and their equipment and it's capped uh that's how we done it the last two and it's worked in the county's favor yeah. most time or most times we've done it okay. but <laughs> get that one <right> <laughs> <laughs> i hate stuff and stuff <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna tear it up here, man. We'll wad it up. Uh, the next one is from uh, All Star Paving. So all star paving bid the emulsions, uh, liquid road, track <clears throat> seal, uh, chip seal. Um, I'll let you guys take a look at the chip seal. That's something new that we've asked that it gets on an annual bid. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that they bid it. Uh, so we'll we'll take that under advisement and see if it makes sense. Uh, we're hoping that it does. In the square yard. It looks like they had a, what did they got double chip seal on the bottom or anything? Was it four dollars? Five twenty-five. Five plus single, single layer. Three twenty-five. Three twenty-five. So HMA is probably ten dollars. Something like that. Square nine, nine ten dollars. Well, speaking of Jackson County or Jefferson County, they one they did 40, 40 miles last year. Mm -hmm. it's a lot of miles. Forty miles. Yeah. In two months. Okay. Five miles. <laughs> This is all star paving again. This is their contractual services, same thing with hourly equipment for their uh, equipment and labor. So, to clarify, there, you're uh, we're going to approve all those, but I mean, you're going to be you're going to have the flexibility to use whoever, yeah, we'll look at the you know, the cheapest bid on you know, on different things, uh, just like. Um, all star say 
Um, I think they look at geographic region as well. Yeah, it's got to make sense on, on where they're yeah. going. But they have eight hour. They, they have minimums on their equipment. So, uh, say a little boy, they have four hour minimums. Some guys down. Some guys will just charge you for what they got in it. But it kind of depends on the job if you're doing it where it's at. That makes sense. This is EMB paving. Um, I worked with their salesman on some other products. And he went to EMB. So EMB is trying to get, they never really, I guess, done a whole lot of trying to sell their hard mix to locals. So they're trying to get in the game, I guess, so to speak. Um, so. They bid base type, intermediate, and surface, surface 63, 50, 57, 50 for the other one, and base 54, so about what they was last year. $3 higher thumb. So is there seen a difference with the quarry since they changed hands? Uh, not really, I haven't. I so. saw the sign change. Yeah. I mean, people didn't. Yeah. It's kind of the same place to me. Uh, my construction. Same way they bid surface, uh, top A tag B binder and base. Base 47 and surface 60. We we had done that the same way, depending on what side of the county we was on. We used Mac if we was you know, on the south side. And uh, this one's KLB escalated. Well, I mean, I know you're, you're going to look at these later in more in depth, but I mean, be curious. Uh, it's just like we did some bidding last year. I mean, they were with within ten or fifteen thousand dollars of each other, which usually doesn't happen that that much. And I'm kind of curious if, if people are in the same ballpark again, trying to bid the same. Yeah. The, the asphalt was super tight this year. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty competitive business. Yeah, that's why I said it. Um, obviously, we'll put the, the five structures on CCMG out to bid, so we'll be able to see <clears throat> who bids on them and where they come in at. Actually, it's building five or first five or 105. Oh, 105, it was close. Yeah. No, it was kind of, it was spread out across. It was it was asphalt, that was so close. Maybe. It was only like $70,000 difference. Like, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Front to back. So I think one of them said they lost a bid earlier in the year with somebody else, and they weren't going to do that again. Yeah, that gets them more competitive, <laughs> for sure. Um, this one's from Champagne Asphalt Company. Uh... Kirby Illinois. Really? And I, to be honest with you, I don't know what they, let's see what they're bidding here. Oh, okay, I know what, the, <clears throat> what it is. Uh, asphalt material reached out to me. 
and uh, this is a company that does chipso work uh, all down in Kentucky, I guess. And uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, they they uh, they bid. 250 single single seal with uh, fog seal and 525 double seal with uh, with fog seal. So uh, that's something I'll dig into on this company, and, and uh, we'll look at that a little later. So it's good that we got the bid. That's all. Of them. All right. Well, I'll entertain a motion to uh, table and review the, the bids. I'll make that motion. Randy makes a motion to uh, allow Kevin to review the bids and return them at a later date, right? I'll second. I think we'll table it over until the next meeting. Okay. Uh, I want to say something real quick. I'll make that unanimous. So, go ahead, sir. Oh, you're good. I want to say that, you know, back when I started being a commissioner, there was a lot less people wanting to do business with Scott County for various reasons. Let's just leave it, leave it lady right there. And now a lot more people is reaching out wanting to do business with us. Yeah, there's and definitely people out there. To me, that is actually, you know, that's a real accomplishment because the, the more people that wants to do business with you, the tighter the bids, the more money we save, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's just something I wanted to bring up. Uh, I appreciate that, you know, the job you're doing, Kevin, because I appreciate it. that's an important factor. I works. That saves the county taxpayers quite a bit of money. Yeah, that's a good opportunity, especially to get the, this company to to come in and, and bid that. So, yeah. Well, we'll, I mean, I think, we'll check in to see where all they're working out of. Uh, I know they're a lot in Kentucky. And like Mac Construction, now, Mac Construction was just about done with Scott County. Yeah, they was at the shop today. So, so uh, thanks guys for coming tonight. I appreciate it for sure. Let's see, did we sign the, the annual bid rollover for? He said to hold off on them until the rest of it. Yeah, but what about the annual bid? Hold off on the annual bid, okay, until the next meeting. We want to do them all together. Okay. Is that correct? Yep. Easy enough. Thank you. Well, I always <laughs> like it. I always like it. Is, is there anything, anything else you want to talk about? Last year. Do what? Was there anything else Thank you, you want to talk about? That's it. They always, I it. missed a couple of meetings. I had a lot. I thought you had something about more. Oh, yeah, I was just going to tell you that. Uh, we got the the challenger we got the the mower off of it it's uh hudson getting the new one put on ground it should be done about five or six days so we'll have it back and they got all the parts they got all the parts yeah it took a long time yeah like seven months to get on the parts for it but all yeah. right i just just to echo one thing randy was saying real quick i mean one of the <clears throat> reason that we do have a lot of this stuff because um i i keep Appreciate you, Kevin, and having the you know the foresight to understand that we have to get in preservation mode. I know we preach that up here all the time. I think in the past nobody has really understood that. It's nobody's fault if you don't understand. It, right? right. I mean, but we do, and we know better. We know we have to start doing those things uh, to save money. So. Thanks for reaching out to those guys and getting some bids. Well, hopefully that'll be an opportunity to get. Get some eyes laid on it anyway. Yeah, we're getting started. Mike and I talked, like I say, to Jefferson County <laughs> Highway Department the other night. They're they're more than willing to say, hey, you know, we certainly are open to work in agreement with cost sharing on equipment and however that does. But we're just trying to find a way to try to move this county into preservation mode. Um, I haven't talked to say and thought about this yet, but I know it's offered. CCMG chip seal is actually on there as an option. Mm -hmm. I haven't dug into it to see all yeah. the ins and outs of it, but 
Uh, I know it's an optional meat and grass in there. We got a lot. We got a lot of needs, don't we? Yeah, well, they, they all cost a lot of money. They all cost a lot of money. I, I think, um, but I think the the five structures that point out that's that's yeah. perfect for this go around. Yeah. Um, and um, <clears throat> that again, you know, you were already talking about maybe one point five. Yeah, it, it'll be around one thirty. We'll have to keep it under one thirty. So it's expensive yeah. work and. Um, you can't just go out and pay roads all the time. Yeah. No. Um, Real quick from Kevin Lee's. It came to me in a vision. He might have talked to Andrew about this, but have you started thinking about what you want on the plaque out on Main Street? Is that? I think we got it nailed down. The American oh, flag. Good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. good. <laughs> That's all I need to know. I think Andrew get it ordered. Uh, yeah, we came. I think finally came to. Uh, well, it'll be here for you know. I, I, I forgot to ask Andrew today, so. Yep, I think. I forgot to ask you too. I think he actually got it ordered. Uh, he's just trying to figure out how he wants to mount it. I was just messaged while we was talking. You heard, probably heard my phone ticking. Uh, so there's some riprap. Uh, so Bogart is Terry. Bogartis. Bogartis. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's Greg's district out there. It's on his side, not my side. <laughs> Actually, no, it's my side. It's your side. Yeah, you're right. It is my side. But anyway. It's like my side. I usually hear about it very good. <laughs> are, yeah. are you, can we do something with yeah. that? I'll just be honest with you. I've thought about it two or three times. When I walked into that, I thought about it again. <laughs> so we'll, we'll check into it. We'll, We'll ask the homeowner to move it first, and I guess if they don't want to, we'll move it for them. So. I, pre I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> uh, Zach has handed me the uh, ordinances for the precinct changes, so. Resolutions. Resolutions. Uh, actually, okay. It says order establishing precincts, whereas Indiana Code 3-11-1-5 or .5 requires the boundaries of precincts to be established and revised in compliance with the law, and that whereas pursuant to IC Code 3-11-1.5, Scott County by and and through its Board of County Commissioners as Determine that it is necessary to properly establish and revise the boundaries of certain precincts for the county. Now, therefore, be it ordered the commissioners of Scott County, Section 1 of Scott County, by and through the Board of Commissioners, establish and revises the boundaries of certain precincts from the county. A precinct description and a map of the boundary of each precinct submitted to the Indiana Election Division is hereby uh, attached hereto and incorporated. Uh, herein by reference. Section 2, this order becomes effective upon approval of these precincts by the Indiana Election Division, provided that no objection is filed by a voter of the county that uh, the Election Board Division by noon, 10 days from the after the publication of notice of the proposed precinct establishment order, or if a timely objection is filed by a voter of the county, then upon the approval of the Indiana Election Commission after a hearing presented to IC Code 3 11 1.5. So we've already passed it, so uh, we're going to sign here. So this day, the 6th of December. And I'm sorry, it's an order, it's not a resolution or ordinance. It's, a, it's an order. We only need one copy now. Unless, I think we only need one copy, one original. Okay. Going back to EMS, since. Uh, let's take that bottom off. Um, looks like Nick has something on a credit card. Well, he had a question, but since he couldn't be here, he wanted to table that one. Okay. And then. And the. Uh, <clears throat> ambulance repairs, uh, do that to her jumper I signed to. It's come to our attention um, outside of this meeting that we have two motors and two ambulances that are trashed. So uh, we need to uh, 
I guess so. I think we all have, and we're just cleaning up here. We've already gave him authority to uh, buy two motors uh, so that he's ahead of the game or can, we can get those ambulances back on the road. So just want to make it an open meeting that you know, commissioners have approved this emergency uh, approval for him and so that it's in a public record on a, in a public meeting. Just so, read it. Yeah. So, so if somebody sees something out there that says, where'd that come from? It's, it came from us, so. Because currently he doesn't even have a backup, right? He doesn't have a backup right now. I mean, he's using every ambulance that he's got right now, so. I mean, pretty critical. So it's critical. So, uh, hopefully, in, you know, a week or two, he can have one back, and then it'll take a couple of weeks for the other one. Uh, and plus, I think he's going with the Jan, uh, Jasper because Jasper a uh, Jasper rebuilder uh, because Ford cannot guarantee when they're going to get him over. So uh, plus it comes with a okay. little warranty. Comes with a little bit of warning. I mean, um, so anyway, moving on. I'll let him talk about the credit card later. Uh, BZ, a area planning commission. Uh, talking about Marty's position after she leaves at the end of the year. We have interviewed a couple of people um, and uh, I guess we'll talk about who either one, all three of us would prefer to fill that position. So I'll let either one of you speak. Uh, I believe uh, we had some good applicants and um, I think the one that uh, really stood out the most impressive for for me anyway was Michelle Lawrence uh, to fill that position. I agree. I mean, she was. Uh, I think she had the most experience that aligned more in, in what we're we're needing. Uh, so. I think she'd be a good answer. Well, I'll add to that too. I mean, both both uh, individuals that we interviewed, I mean, we had three, one uh, canceled at the last minute, but I um, I think all, all both candidates uh, you know, had a good interview. Uh, I think, again, I'll concur with you too, is that Michelle stood above the others and, um, so I guess it, we're going to have to figure out with council um, about whether we can bring her on you know, before the end of the year so that she can be trained with Marty. And if she can, I mean, I've asked Marty if, if, if that's not a viable uh, solution that would she be available to come back on a part-time basis after the first of the year and train her? And she acted like she might. I mean, <laughs> as long as we fed her or something, I don't know what the, all that quote was. But, <clears throat> but anyway, we, we, we need to get with the council and ask the council if Marty's turning money back in out of her budget at the end of the year, um, maybe we have enough money there to be able to support her us hiring her now and having her being trained uh, in the month of December here and, and uh, but it's that's going to have to be a council uh, uh, I guess approval through them to be able to do that so I will and if you guys have an opportunity to reach out to any of the council members uh, kind of explain what we're asking and uh, you don't need to talk to any of them. But. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we need to we need to try to explain why we're asking for it, and maybe if that's uh, attending their meeting on the twelfth and trying to explain that, maybe that's something we'll do. So obviously, <laughs> you, our attorney will be there to talk to you, Gary, or Randy. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, can we send? Or a notice, or give her a notice, of, uh, and uh, actually the other girl I noticed 
So, okay. Moving on, Jennifer. Yes. Um, I just wanted to kind of announce that uh, with the new electronics they're doing with the transfers and things like that in the recorder's office, that's going to have more for us that transfers and um, sales disclosures can now be paid electronically. So we're setting up a bank account for us that that can be proceeded into um, just so that we can accept those electronically. So Sounds we're going to become man. modern. 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 Well, we're really taking big steps I'm tonight. We are <laughs> huge. Yeah. Huge. So, do you need a walking toward I mean, the light? You're doing this. Or or doing it's yeah, you're, you're just informing us. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. Because they're supposed to go live next Wednesday, and we'll cut it close. <laughs> um, it says sign the holiday schedule for 2024. And we've already approved it, but we did not sign one. Oh yeah, so you had a form, different format or something. Yeah. That one format, that was crazy. Well, thank you. That, was, <laughs> that looked like a Chinese. Is that the one? I hope that's the one you that's wanted. The one. That's the one I wanted. That's I could have. That other one looked like a Chinese checkerboard. <laughs> okay. Uh, consideration of a regular and special invoices. Before we do that, can we amend the agenda? We had a couple of things come in. We've got two um, grant requests for grant applications from EMA that we need to sign. And then also, looking a little bit with the stuff, I pulled this off. I'm going to have Zach look at it. I don't know if we need to sign this now or maybe later, but I did some work with the ADA for this grant, but it's I don't think it's what you need, but it's a step, maybe. So, okay. I'll have you look at this. And did you did you take back the uh, two special uh, clients? Yes, they're okay. right here. Okay. They're right here. Mm -hmm. I, had, I thought I had them over here. No, they're right there. But here's the grant application. If you'd like to. All right. Those. I'd like to amend the agenda for grant applications. All right. We had a motion to uh, amend the agenda for two uh, to include uh, grant applications. Um, Greg, you good with that? Yeah, I'll second that. Greg seconds that, and I like that unanimous. All right. Oh, I don't know what these are. Uh, it's actually a grant from the Scott County EMA, and the amount, and this is. Um, um, County will receive the funds uh, to uh, to purchase, so it's it's no money out of our 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 budget or anything. An amount of twenty seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, from Duke Energy for a, a drone, uh, and the second one is also from EMA, and it is re 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 reimbursable. Uh, means the county spends. Then gets reimbursed, bless you. Uh, and it's for $26,329.74. And I believe this is actually to support the salary yes. uh, for the EMA position. So, <clears throat> we won't be doing any drone strikes, will we? <laughs> actually, they use that quite often. I'll be so, you'll be surprised. I mean, um, oh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. This one, this one, isn't big enough to haul anything. So I'll entertain a motion. Payload of water blue. Yeah, I'll entertain a motion to accept both these grant applications. I'll make that. Randy makes a motion to accept both grant applications. Greg, I'll second. Greg seconds. I don't make that unanimous. So. All right, moving along to uh, the special claims. I have two in front of me for, uh, for uh, I guess, Brown Construction Company for 
uh, construction on. I'm, I'm going to assume. Well, one it says bridge repair, but it's this is all for 105, is it not? 120, 317, 40. 105. And the other one's 14, 304, 16. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh, yeah, that's uh, metal for the building. Base metal, so. Okay. So, one, again, these are for KOB excavating. One's in the amount of 120317 40 and I'm sure that's a draw for from his building. And the other one's for 14304 So I'll entertain a motion to... I'll, see. I'll make that motion. See. Randy makes a motion to accept both these. Greg? My second. Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So that's what we're all signing this. Put that away back to you. All right. Is there any more in the big book? I don't think there's any more specials. I think that was all that we had on that. These are just the regular ones, I believe. So I'll entertain a motion. Mandy's already sent those out in an email. So has everybody had an opportunity to look at those? And I'll accept a motion. I'll make the motion. There's Randy's made a motion to accept his claims. Greg? I'll second that. Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So. You know what? There should be one more. Wait a minute. Let me go look at that. There might be one more. Special. Uh, I'm going to entertain a motion to uh, consider the payroll for November the 17th and December the 1st. Of 2023. I'll make that motion. And also, I'm going to add on there the 2023 long longevity checks. Two. Yeah. You good with that? Yeah. Randy's made the motion. Greg? I'll second. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. What I don't see on here is the minutes. So. on here. Do we have those? I do not have okay. any right All right. Randy, you have anything else? Um, we need to sign the payroll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, uh, I do not actually. Are you going? What are you going to say? I've got some stuff to I say. I knew it. <laughs> Most of it's good. Most of it's not. Some of it's not. You got anything? No, I ain't got Greg, you got anything? Yeah. So he's getting Greg got something. He's getting in there. He is. I might come up with something after you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just gonna let Kevin know and you guys as well. I reached out and talked to uh, railroad company in Columbus um, talked to those guys they're going to come down sometime maybe next week he's hoping uh, I asked him to just give us an estimate from Christie Road ditching along the, the tracks all the way to the first tributary uh, there in Skeletek and uh, or close to there, that area, and just give us an estimate on what we could be looking at. Um, Reaching it from the track. Yeah. And so uh, the good thing about this company, well, won't be real good because I know anytime you're building with rail, it's, it's expensive. But uh, the positives, I guess I would go with that is, is that they take care of their own permitting. So that saved me from calling and getting another estimate for uh, getting the permits and such for that. Um, and the flagging costs, the flagging costs uh, are not cheap or something like that. So anyway, it's a one-stop shop right there. That guy handles everything out of that company right there in Columbus. So uh, he may come down next week. Um, I know Kevin and I, we've been down there. We've met Shane and the mayor. Um, 
<clears throat> Bill Comers reached out to me from a drainage board standpoint, seeing what we could do. This is the first step. Yeah, we'll get with them and get, get an estimate tied to that work, and then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. and try to figure out who all we need to pull together to get help. So yeah, good deal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the only thing I have is uh, two things. First of all, I'm going to reach out because I had somebody from the museum ask me about the city, and I think this falls into the National Guard Armory where they're wanting to get water away from them. But the museum contacted me and said that the city told them that they need, they're going to replace their culverts on the west side of Main Street but they were going to charge them like $3,000 to, to replace culverts that, you know, in my opinion, I mean, I guess, and this is strictly my opinion, is that uh, why, if the, if the cities have to do something to upgrade or move water away from an area that they, they have, or they uh, asking someone else to pay for culverts that, have been working they just they should have never been the size i guess maybe they were and they should but i'm gonna reach out to the mayor and see if uh, well, i think that the culvert that goes under the road would be north of the, of the museum's culverts so when it backs up and tops the road backing up under the private museum side so truthfully i mean in the big picture i think there would be no sense for the city to put a, a bigger culvert in unless the museum puts a bigger culvert in because really it's the museum that's just ball up squawking in. Yeah. But I've seen them laying there. I've seen some of them laying there. I'm not sure where those folks go. Yeah. So the other thing is, and this is a hot topic, this is a hot topic for me and I'm sure the other two commissioners because this, this can go to a uh, a bigger cost to the community is, uh, is the trash sites. And uh, we've installed cameras at Stacy's trash site. Um, I've sat out there a couple of different times and talked to probably 30 people about not dumping before the 3.30 time period. And uh, I've actually watched the camera um, afterwards to the point where I didn't see this the same people that I talked to come back um, and I actually ran into a couple of those people out on the street and they said hey you know I, they appreciate the conversation and and understand now that they are not supposed to do that um, but I want in an open meeting and we're going to post something on um, on our Facebook post for the county about the importance of not dropping it before three thirty, and I understand people's thoughts of, "Hey, uh, it's in a it's in a bag. It's got a sticker on it. It's it's not leaking." Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but in I den doesn't care if it's leaking or not. If it if there's a trash bag sitting on the ground. Um, they're going to write you up, and and um, seems like we've been a you know a big red flag for people here lately, and and because uh, all three locations have been written up, uh, so I'm pleading uh, with the residents of Scott County to stop doing what they they've been doing for years. Or actually, I don't even think they've been doing it for years. It seems like it's. It's been a rash here in the last three or four months that people are doing this, but if you if you want to continue uh, this program, and this program is is paid by taxpayers, but if we're going to get fined up to twenty five thousand dollars, and and Kevin can attest that hauling off the waste that we, and I'm talking waste that. The state has told us come in and dig six inches of, of dirt up and haul it off as hazmat, and then we have to pay for that. In which Kevin has an estimate of somewhere in the seven thousand dollar range for us just to haul off uh, 
rock, dirt, whatever that has been absorbing uh, trash for several years, uh, we're not going to pay that anymore. I mean, so if you want the service, talk to your neighbors, talk to yourself, tell yourself that I'm going to go at 3.30, I'm going to make arrangements, because if, if we get fined from the state, I, I for one, I'm only one vote, but I, I would pull it. And, and uh, uh, the people that I've talked to out there, I mean, there is a four before sign out there reflected that says all the dates, all the times, and, and the $1,000 fine that they can be fined uh, for dropping it you know, on the ground before that. But I don't know how many people I had to show the sign to. I mean, uh, and it's 10 feet away from them. So uh, I don't really understand uh, why people continue to do that. But I can tell you that, you know, I hate to say this, but people are going to be fined. I mean, I'll just put it that way because a lot of people want this. And, and, and quite honestly, I've watched a lot of the video. There are a lot of people that are out, out there at all these locations. I have a picture of every person that's dropped a bag on the ground. Uh, so, I mean, if you don't want to be uh, fined, because we're going to send you a, a happy letter that says, you know, you've been warned. But the next time, it's not going to be a happy letter, and, it's, and you are going to be fined. And if we get fined from the state, I don't know if that we're going to continue it. So hopefully we can stop it before we get fined from the state. Uh, I don't want to fine anybody. I mean, it's easily well, said. The, the fine, I just want to be clear, like the fines are just the states. That's a monetary option. They have the option to say, we're not going to authorize you. We're not going to, we're not going to grant you your permit. That's don't exactly you. right. That's exactly right. It could come to that. And I it mean, could come that's, to that. That's a possibility. Yeah, so if you want to, and I get it, I, I've watched people, I've, I talk, like I said, I've talked to a bunch of people that come out there, and they want, this, they want the convenience of it. And so all that discussion last year about keeping it open, it's not even going to be an option. Yeah, because the state, you're right, I never thought, I never thought to say that, but you're right, the state could come in and say, what, well, these, these satellite locations, we're not going to approve them anymore, and, and we've we've wrote you up too many times, and we don't want to find you, maybe, and we'll just shut you down. So I, my, I'm pleading with people just to uh, to stop. I mean, watch for the 3:30. I've actually talked to Todd and made sure that his people are there at 3:30 because I mean, I I watched the camera at 3:30. There's people sitting there, and so if we if they're there, we need to be there. So. Um, that's all I got. Well, and like you said, Mike, you know, if you can't make those hours, I mean, there's a transfer station. Maybe you Saturday. take it tomorrow, that yeah. kind of thing. You know, you make you make other arrangements, and uh, we have another location you can take trains to. I mean, so it's it's not like it's kind of you know one stop kind of thing. If you can't make it that day, go to the transfer station. There's another location, and uh, it's free. It's free at the transfer station too. If you got a sticker on it, yeah. walk up, throw the bag in. You know, so, you know, and what people like you mentioned, just to echo, you know, the cost of Kevin and the guys hauling and stuff off. People don't realize we're paying fines also. Yeah. Uh, for the state. So. I well, mean, I mean, just just to to kind of reel in a little bit what Mike was saying. It's exactly what Zach was saying, and you know, and the fines. Either way, it's between the fines. Or IDM pulling our permit. If you don't follow the rules, then you're taking you're taking the decision out of our hands to keep the thing. Yeah. Because yeah. the county just we can't afford it, guys. We well, I don't. Are you know, to keep it? But we need help. All, all the counties out there that are helping with trash is, is people who has landfills. So we're really going way above and beyond to try to make it an option for people with trash and to make it you know as affordable as possible. But if you don't follow the guidelines and take somebody, you know, the uh, uh, the trash ferry is going to take care of it. Well, then the trash ferry will end up gone. Yep. All right. That's all I got. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make it.
room. I'll take it. I'll make that unanimous, so.